Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another Garmin Marine Team webinar. Today, I'm going to cover choosing the right radar for you. As always, remember, any of our past webinars we have posted to our Garmin YouTube page. And so you can just go into the Garmin YouTube page. It's under the Marine portion there and webinars. If you have any questions about this specific webinar, you can email us at Marine dot training at garmin.com so first off i just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about radar what it is how it actually works very briefly just to give people an overview if they're choosing radar for the first time on their vessel so radar stands for radio detection and ranging so it's an object detection system um, that actually sends out energy transmitted in pulses, which reflects off objects and then returns back to the receiver. So this is in essence, real time. Once those uh, waves are sent back to the receiver, those targets can then be translated into images on our radar screen. Um, and then at that point, we can do a lot of different things with it, depending on what type of radar that we're actually running. If we're running a, a traditional magnetron radar, or if we're using a new solid state phantom radar. And on the screen here, you'll see our vessels in the center here. We're showing land islands here. And then these are moving targets. So these could be a, a vessel coming towards us, a vessel going away from us. And that's a function of our solid state magnetron radars that we'll get into a little bit later in this webinar. So what are the benefits of radar? I remember years ago when I was, this is probably 25 years ago, I, in, I live in Florida. The first time I went out with uh, uh, a very seasoned sea captain and he said, once you have a radar in your boat, you'll never have a boat without radar. And I didn't understand it really in Florida because uh, we don't get a lot of fog, but we get a little bit of fog. The thing that we use it for here a lot is running around storms because the storms can be smaller, but they look huge and very intense. But we can see the direction that they're moving, the intensity of the storms. And we'll show you later on how you can actually see it really well with our phantom solid state radars. So on the left hand side, we're showing collision avoidance. And this is a very uh, cool looking screenshot that one of our sales managers actually took in my area in Florida. And what you see is his vessels here in the center and these are all boats around him. So fortunately enough, this was a clear sunny day. So he didn't really have to worry about getting out like in the fog, but in low visibility situations, radars work really well. I've been in this particular area many, many years ago where the fog was this thick in Florida and you could hear boats running at full speed. So it would have been nice to have a radar on the vessel just to see in which direction if they're heading towards me. A benefits of radar here, uh, navigational assistance, you know, both coming into land and coastal. Yes, these are older screenshots, but what you're actually seeing here is us coming in uh, uh, into this area here and our vessels here, and we're actually using the radar overlay along with our navigational chart. So we can actually do two things at once to give us better situational awareness. And then over on this screen here, which is an older screenshot, we're actually showing a route that we're uh, attempting to follow. We're a little off, off course there, but getting back on course. And then that is also showing the radar overlay, which is right here. So that's obviously giving you real-time information of the co coastline, the shoreline, you know, and any other information on the screen itself. So magnetron radars, these are conventional ra radars that rely on a magnetron to generate the electronic waves. They use very high voltage output pulses at high frequency. And the bottom line is the more powerful the radar, the more energy that we can put on the target. And when you move from our dome radars up to our open array radars, you're doing a couple things. You're actually decreasing the 
horizontal beam width. So you're narrowing this beam and then you're also increasing power. And with that, you're gonna get better target separations, especially on smaller targets. And we'll show you that a little bit later in this webinar. Solid state. So solid state, our, our solid state radars have now been out for uh, quite a few years. The solid state radars, which is our phantom, eliminate the magnetron and replace it with a solid state broadband transmitter that outputs clean frequency stable signal. What this actually does is it's reliable. We can uh, control the uh, frequency itself. Uh, precise frequency control allows us to chirp the pulse and use pulse compression. So, you know, it, not exactly like a sonar would chirp, but, but very similar. When we chirp this, we can get really high range resolution and great target separating using a solid state radar. Also, when we can control the frequency, we can collect Doppler or motion scope from our targets. And with that, we can show targets moving in a direction like I showed on one of those prior screenshots. Are they coming towards me? Are they going away from me? What direction is that weather moving? So we have that ability with the solid state radars, only solid state, we can't do this on our magnetron radars, to show you motion scope or Doppler radar. And we we have solid state radars from a dome all the way up to open array antennas. So now uh, take out a pen and paper and we're gonna uh, calculate the horizon. No, I'm just kidding here. So just to calculate, you know, what can I see and how far can I see? If you actually take the height of your radar off the surface of the water um, and you, take the square root of that. So for example, we've got 16 feet, square root of 16 is four, and then multiply that by 1.23. You're about five miles or so, depending on sea conditions that you can actually see. In this example here, we have two vessels, both radars are 16 feet off the surface of the water, and they could see each other approximately at 10 miles. Now there's some other variables that'll come into play, but that's kind of the general rule is why am I not seeing this particular vessel? Or I've had two boats anchored up next to each other, you know, just kind of beached up in an area and they're pointing offshore and the dome radar, um, you know, uh, was much lower and couldn't see that vessel that was out further because the boat next to them had an open array that was up much higher and could see uh, more information, more vessels offshore. So the higher the antenna, obviously the farther that that can see. Here's probably the biggest fundamentals that I kind of talk about is horizontal beam width. So it depends on what radar that you're actually using because yes, our even our 18 inch radar has bird mode in it. And I'll talk about birds later on here in the webinar. But let's first talk about beam width. So our 18 inch domes are a 5.2 degree beam, horizontal beam. So if you, everyone take their hands, arms, and put them straight out in front of you, and then you widen them up to what you think is about five degrees, and then spin around in a circle. And that is our antenna or our array spinning around and anything within that between your hands looking forward would be picked up by the radar and then shown on the screen itself. So if you notice here, when we go from an 18 inch all the way up to our open arrays, which are six feet, we can go down to a 1.1 degree horizontal beam, which means that we're actually getting more power, more energy on a target, with a narrower beam so we can target separate a lot better. And I'll give you an example of this coming up here. So large antennas obviously reduce smearing and sharpen the picture a little bit. Larger antennas focus more energy on the target, bigger is better. 
if you can do it. So obviously, if you've got a 25 foot center console with a T-top and you want to run a radar, our six foot open array would not work for you. And this just gives you an example. The Phantom 18 is a great, outstanding radar, very, very popular. And this is just giving you an example from the 18 to our best top of the line Phantom radar, which is the 256. So this is 250 watts of solid state power and a six foot open array in the, in a, uh, the same area here. So just kind of give you an idea of what you're seeing here with some of the targets and, and the detail of the shoreline along here. And then back on the horizontal beam. So like I said before, with our domes, you're looking at about a 5.2 degree horizontal beam. And then we can narrow it all the way down to some of our open arrays all the way down to 1.1. So when we can take this angle here and narrow it and put more power on it, that's where we get the target separation. So we got the radar shooting out in front of us and what are we actually seeing and how can we separate it? You ever get the uh, question is, you know, hey, same thing that that smaller vessel has a 18 inch dome and then the boat next to it has a six foot open array. And that open array sees, you know, two jet skiers at a not one nautical mile as two separate targets, but the dome sees them as one. Well, I'll give you an idea here. And this is this is just for illustration purposes. This is a an older screenshot here, but let's say that we had a radar here. And we're using a dome radar and we're looking for this larger vessel out here. And this is what it would show up as on our screen. But there's actually two boats out there running together with each other. And what the open array can do is actually in that sweep, it can actually show and separate both of those vessels because of the beam angle being narrower. So it's going to pick up one, two. This beam being so wide, it just shows that target is one single target. So a good illustration is when you're moving up into radars, the larger, the bigger, the better, the, the more power and narrower horizontal beam width. And then vertical beam width, you just wanna, you wanna make sure with a couple things with this, ours range anywhere from 23 to 25 degrees. Yeah, you don't wanna mount any antennas in line with the radar beam, ideally. Um, you know, make sure it's mounted under or over any kind of obstacle. Um, you know, remember our open arrays can output power out um, up to 25,000 watts of, of power. And then any type of wedge or mount, something that you might need to get additional height to raise it above something, those are sold separately by third party vendors. So just remember, you want to make sure you have a clear view to the sky. Um, you know, what is the angle of your radar beam when you're running? You know, so is it is it horizontal to the surface of the water or when you're up and running, is it just pointing straight up into the sky and you're not seeing anything? So make sure when you go to a um, an installer that they're mounting it correctly and have it at the proper angle. So what what is our radar product line? We range anywhere, and th these are US prices, obviously. We can range anywhere from around the $1,300 price range all the way up, up into our top of the line Phantom solid state radars, um, you know, which are $11,500. You've got your magnetron radars here. You've got your dome solid state Phantom radars here. Magnetron XHD2 open arrays. So we've got four kilowatt, 12 kilowatt, and 25 kilowatt radars here. And then our phantom open arrays from 50 watts of power, 120 all the way up to our best 250 watts of power. So that's the complete lineup that we offer. Remember the big thing when you're moving from a magnetron radar up into a phantom, you're getting that motion scope Doppler technology, identifying moving targets. Let's go into dome radars here. 
And remember, with all of our radars included in the box, you're gonna have the mounting hardware necessary, the power cable, which is a 15 meter cable, a network cable, which is a 15 meter network cable, installation instructions and mounting te template. If you need any type of mount or wedges, those are from third party manufacturers. We do not include them because each vessel is a little bit different. So let's talk about our HD, High Definition Plus and XHD dome radars. These are magnetron radars, very popular. This is an entry level magnetron radar called the GMR 18HD Plus. Four kilowatts of power, 36 nautical mile range. What is nice about Garmin radar is, uh, and really any of, the, of our Garmin systems, MFDs, is the uh, plug, play, go, and let it work. And that's what dynamic auto gain and C filter settings can do. So it will adjust to the different conditions and weather conditions around you in order for it to perform properly, reduce noise and clutter. So let's say, let's go back to generation, you know, one in radars. When you had a storm, you're on a bright sunny day and a storm would blow up and then all of a sudden your radar would just go red or just have a bunch of clutter on it. That's because it didn't have in the Garmin system dynamic auto gain. And so with this, it can actually adjust that so we can still see vessels and buoys and other targets land without completely losing the screen. And that's what that dynamic auto gain feature can do for us. Also, this radar has MARPA, the mini automatic radar plotting aid. So what that allows us to do is target track 10 targets simultaneously. Just remember you need a heading sensor for this. We have heading sensors that we sell separately, or if you have a Garmin Autopilot on, on board, this will act as your heading sensor in order to track those targets. Um, we can also on this entry level radar, overlay the image on our chart plotters page. And then if you notice there, the beam width 5.2 degrees and then 25 degrees vertical. We do make these in a bundle so you can get the 18 plus with our multifunction display 743, 943 and 1243. The other thing that I wanna make sure to emphasize also our radars were, are only compatible, and I'll show you a chart later in this presentation. They're only compatible with our GPS map series. They are not compatible with any echo map unit or striker unit, only the GPS map series. Our radars are backwards compatible, and we'll talk about that in a little bit of if you have an older legacy Garmin, let's say a 7212, what will that actually show me when I buy a new Phantom radar? And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So now we're getting into the 18 inch XHD and 24 inch XHT radar. So just like before in the uh, 18 HD plus, you have dynamic auto gain, C filter, the color resolution, but this one's going to add dual radar support, dual range, and a little bit longer um, range of 48 nautical miles versus 36. So dual uh, radar support, this is nice because on the larger boats, maybe you've got a bigger cruiser or sport fish, they might run two radars, a dome and an open array at the same time. And so this has that capability of doing it. Also dual range. I think this is probably one of the biggest features why people will jump up into this series radar because for just a few hundred dollars more, they can actually get into a radar that's dual range, which is technically um, two radars in one. They can do a split screen so they can look at a real close image of their area and then zoom out and look further ahead. So that's a big feature that people are looking for. The other um, addition with this series here, the XHD series, is the 24 inch. So if you notice, remember I said, the larger the physical size of the antenna, the narrower 
the horizontal beam width is. And so now when we get up into the 24, now we're taking it from 5.2 degrees horizontal down to 3.7, giving us that better target separation. Now let's talk about the solid state dome radars, the Phantom series. So first off, there's no magnetron in this. So the power amps are more reliable. They offer precise frequency control and they don't need a long warm up time. So, you know, uh, you turn them on, they're almost instantaneously on and up and running. There's not a magnetron that's hatched actually having to warm up. It uses that pulse compression technology to give you that high resolution image and great target separation. So um, this allows for higher energy on a target with lower peak power. And then probably the number one feature that I see with my customers is it offers motion scope. That's the Doppler radar. So moving targets, we can tell in which direction they're actually moving, and we can instantaneously detect those targets. And this is a good example, like I said before. So this is the phantom motion scope. We're here in the center. We've got land over here. We've got land over here. And in this instance, I believe this was a seaplane landing here. And so we can see it coming in. We have echo trails turned on. So that's why we see the blue line behind this. And then the airplane coming in, which is a red target because it's actually coming towards us. Over here, we have two smaller vessels, could be jet skis or something that are actually heading away. We can see the echo trails behind them. So we know they're not a serious, uh, you know, target that we need to look at because they're going away. It looks like we had a couple other targets up here that were probably moving away from us. So this is a good example of motion scope, situational awareness, and how those uh, phantom radars are really beneficial, you know, to people, new people or people that are very familiar with radar. It, it just paints a great picture. This is a screenshot. I use this screenshot a lot. It, it comes from one of our sales managers. He took it a few years ago. It just tells a great story about a lot of things that our phantom radars can actually show you on the screen. And in this instance here, we're going to just highlight the weather. So with Doppler radar or motion scope, we can actually tell this huge storm cloud here, very intense storm, and this portion of it was actually heading towards our sales manager here. This is where his vessel is and had a bunch of other vessels around him, which we're seeing here. And then this portion of the weather was actually heading away from him. So it's a good illustration here. We're also gonna use this for birds later, uh, later on. And can you pick out where you think the birds are in this screen? So. We'll be back to that later on. So with the Phantom series, we have an 18 inch and a 24 inch. You can see there on the left-hand side, it did put part numbers in there for you. So obviously uh, the way I talk about these, and if you're trying to decide, it's really motion scope, solid state pulse compression, and a lower power draw. That, that's the biggest thing that you're gonna see. And it's got a lot of other features that are built into it. But those are the big things that you're actually looking for. These also have real close range detection. So these can range all the way down to 20 feet. Um, these are dual radars. So you could actually put a 18 inch phantom on a vessel and maybe that's because they wanna do that 20 foot real close in range. And then maybe they would want a magnetron six foot open array radar. And maybe they're gonna use that for detecting birds, you know, at a, at a distance. So they could run those simultaneously. Obviously, the other thing too is great for the sailing community, lower max power draw. So when you're taking this versus a dome magnetron, like our XHD or HD plus, the max power draw is 25 watts in our solid state phantoms and then 48 watts in the magnetron. 
So you're going to save a lot of power when you're actually utilizing the Phantom series. And then the beam width. So you notice we have two versions. We have an 18 and a 24 inch. And so we can go all the way down to 3.7 degree horizontal beam. Obviously with that, better target separation than what the 5.2 degree is. So we have auto bird gain. And let me say this right off the bat here. So yes, our dome radars have bird, bird gain built into them. Yes, you can see flocks of birds, but when you're wanting to see, you know, two small birds at six nautical miles, you're probably not going to see them with these domes. And that's just a function of, you know, physically the horizontal beam width and then the amount of power that these are outputting. Okay. But still, you can see birds, you can see smaller targets, you know, when there's a flock of birds, you'll be able to see it. All of those dynamic gain features are built into this so you can turn it on auto allow it to run and then when it when that big storm rolls in your screen's not going completely red or you're not being able to just be overwhelmed with too much clutter on the screen it's going to work in the background so you can still see that vessel that buoy that land you can also change target sizes so if you need to increase a certain target to help you differentiate that from noise you have the ability with this uh, series of radar marpa is built into this so with that you can track up to 10 targets simultaneously and you do need a heading sensor for that and if you have a garmin autopilot that will act as your heading sensor and then dual dual range so like i said before in the xhd series the Phantom series is also dual range, so it's really like two radars in one. Some screenshots that we took. So we showed motion scope before. You know, targets coming towards us are going to show up in more like fuchsia with this because we've got a red um, landmass here. And then green going away, we have echo trails turned on. We talked about weather. This is really close range, so we can go down all the way down to about 20 feet. And then the dynamic auto gain, which we talked about. So that'll just adjust to your surroundings for the, the best performance that you can get out of it. We have uh, VRM and EBL, so the variable range markers and electronic bearing lines. That will allow you to rapidly measure the distance and bearing to a vessel and to land. So that's built into this. And then you have radar overlay. And so we can take our radar and overlay that over our chart plotter portion and get those simultaneously uh, to display on the screen. You want to make sure that you have a smart heading sensor when you're doing radar overlay or you're gonna see a lot of movement and drift and it's not gonna sync up properly. So just remember to have a, a smart heading sensor. Obviously a Garmin autopilot would act as that. This is a good little kind of a uh, matrix here that goes through all of our radars. Um, you know, feel free to take a, take a screenshot of this if you're kind of looking to see the different features and what you might have. Earlier, I talked about, let's say I have a 7212. Okay, so that would fall over here. So here's our radars. So magnetron, entry level, magnetron upgrade, and phantom series, solid state. So I've got a 7212 and I want motion scope. Well, let's see here. Now I'm going to get auto gain, overlay, MARPA. Let's see, motion scope. No. So just remember when you're actually selecting your radar, will the Phantom, let's just say um, 18, work with a 7212? It will. It will give you just these features here. So in order to unlock the entire feature set, you're going to need a current Garmin GPS map series. Remember GPS map. And that's going to cover all of our series from the 7x3, which would be like a 742, 9 or 743, 943, all the way down to 742, 942. 
74 and 7600 series will unlock all the features here and then obviously our 8000 series feature will completely unlock all the potentials of the phantom series so now we talk domes let's talk about open array radars and we're going to start up with the xhd2 this is our magnetron radar remember again in the box mounting hardware power cable network installation instructions mounting template and any kind of uh, third-party mounts or wedges you'll need to purchase separately on that all right so here's our lineup very simple four kilowatt 12 kilowatt 25 kilowatt of power okay you can get them in a four foot here's your four foot series here or you can get them in a six foot okay here's the difference horizontal member the narrower the beam the better target separation and so that's what you're seeing when you get up into a six foot and then these will have an auto bird mode and really from what i've seen when i have people coming up and asking and this is at any type of boat show or event that we do they need a bird radar okay what type of vessel how are you using it um what kind of distance are you looking at you know you've got a, a 42 offshore center console you would see the majority of um that type of boater that's using it for fishing and targeting birds at a distance uh, i really prefer and find that our 12 kilowatt is a great bird radar and 25 you'd see mainly on some of the real big sport fish but those are great for finding birds not to say that this four kilowatt couldn't but you're going to get a better uh, um picture and you're going to be able to target separate much better with this type of power here when you're getting into that you know 12 kilowatt of power obviously we've got dual radar support so yes we can run two radars on the same vessel dual range pulse expansion everything else that we talked about the one caveat that we want to mention here with a magnetron radar remember right down on the bottom here no motion scope that's a feature of our phantom radars so the doppler radar that are showing moving targets in which direction that they're you know are they coming towards us or going away that's in our phantom radars so we talked about echo trails it's a historic trail left on the screen so you can quickly identify moving targets you know in inshore close in in a harbor area sometimes this can get a little bit cluttered so a lot of times if it's a target that you're looking at or smaller targets you might turn that on and then you can time delay of how long you actually see those targets behind um and those trails behind a certain target pulse expansion so this increases the duration of the pulse which puts more energy on a target and provides that target to be larger on the screen itself this is an example where I would say it's maybe not the best when you're inshore, like we are here in this area. So here's a uh, pulse expansion off. And then this is when it's on, you do see some of these smaller targets appear larger. And so that's really where we're, we're trying to illustrate with pulse expansion on. It can actually blow those targets up in case you're not seeing them as well. And you can see them a little bit better. But obviously, this is blending some of the smaller islands in here together. So that's pulse expansion. Dual range, like we said before, um, a single radar can actually show split screen. So we can have them at dual range. You know, we can have them at uh, half a nautical mile over here. We can do it with a radar and uh, chart overlay and see them at the same time. And then dual radar support. So like we said, we can come in here and we can pick and choose if we have two radars on the network itself and choose which one that we want to view. So this particular vessel has a, a uh, 40, uh, 424 and 1224 on the network itself. And so we can pick and choose what display that this is actually going to show simultaneously. And then birds. 
so we can locate flocks of birds. Like I said, really my preference is the 12 kilowatt and 25 kilowatt radars for birds. And if you see here, these are birds and these are birds. What you're gonna actually see too, and this is, you know, for people that, that fish a lot, you know this, but usually these are gonna pop up and go away. So every time your radar antenna is sweeping around, it'll be there and it's gone, it'll be there. And you really know that those are birds and it's not a, a small vessel or a kayak or something out there, you know, way offshore. It's birds because they're diving down. So that's something that you want to take a look at when you're looking for birds is kind of that inter, you know, intermittent. Wow, they're there, they're not, they're there, they're not. Those have to be birds because they're diving down into the water. So now let's get into the Phantom Solid State Open Array Radar lineup. It first is our 5X and 12X series. So these are our 50 watt and 120 watt. Obviously these have motion scope. You can see the equivalents. So these are just approximate uh, 50, kilo, uh, 50 watt solid state is about the equivalent to a six kilowatt magnetron. And then the 120 is approximately equivalent to the 15 kilowatt magnetron. Um, solid state, pulse compression. So really good target separation, echo trails. And then these are, this is where you get into that close uh, range detection from 20 feet out to 72 nautical miles on the 5X and then all the way out to 96 nautical miles on the 12X. What are you going to see at 96 nautical miles? Well, first off, it's probably going to be weather is really what you're looking at. And, you know, detecting weather and seeing the weather and seeing in which direction that that weather is moving. So, yeah, obviously we're not going to see vessels um, birds are irrelevant at that distance because I've never seen a boat be able to move that fast to intercept those birds at 96 miles. And then you see the beam width on the bottom here. So four, four foot is 1.8 degree horizontal beam and then the 1.25 in the six foot. So bigger, better, narrower beam. And everything we went over before, the bird gain dynamic features, turn it on, put it in auto and allow, allow it to run. You still have all the manual features too. So we can go in and adjust, manually adjust gains and C filter and anything else in that radar. Target size, MARP is built in, guard zones are all built into that. So last summer, 2020, we announced the brand new Phantom uh, 250 series. So 250 watts of solid state power, market leading 250 watts of solid state power, two versions, the four foot and six foot. These are just incredible radars. I've been fortunate enough to see these out on the water and see the target separation to see them find birds at distances and it is incredible what they can actually do. These are, you know, really in my opinion, great bird radars. Um, they also have a couple new features that we actually uh, built into these units here into the 250 series and that's scan to scan averaging. So what this will do is enhance the detection of consistent targets. It works well at longer ranges. And I'll show you here in a little bit of what I'm talking about. And then MARPA with auto acquisition. So this is something a little bit different where we can actually pick and choose either a zone or we can pick and choose certain areas that we wanna target those MARPA targets. Obviously we have motion scope built in and all the other cool features of our Phantom Raiders are built into it. And then you can see the beam widths on the bottom there, same as what the 50 and 120 series are. So auto bird mode. This was a, a screenshot that obviously said I said I was going to come back to. And this is what you would see birds, birds popping up and down. These were birds here. 
And so that's what it would look like on the screen itself. We're in auto bird gain. We've got motion scope. So that's why we're seeing this, this weather moving in here and coming towards us and going away. And then the birds over here. So the 250 series phantom open array are great for finding birds. The other is another optional filter, which is called scanning average. So what we can actually do, it's great for filtering out random noise and wave returns. It enhances detection of consistent targets. And like I said before, it's best on longer ranges. So under radar filters, you'll see that scan average. And then we can go in here and pick and choose low, medium, or high, depending on how much clutter or noise that we want to get rid of. So if we take a look at here, let's go ahead and we'll turn it on. And this will actually run through on the right-hand radar screen here from low to medium to high, the different scanning averages. And you can see right there how it's starting to clean that screen up there. Now let's go in and do scanning average and we'll do medium here. And so what it's doing is taking a lot of that noise and clutter out and just showing our targets there on the screen itself. And then finally high. And so this will go in there, clean up the screen a little bit, clean up a lot of that clutter. You notice it's took away some of the, some of the targets there. So you have to actually, you know, Get onto a fixed target and, and take a look at it and see. So if you've got a boat or something there and it completely, um, uh, you know, it doesn't show it anymore once you have it up on high, adjust those settings to maybe medium or low. So in addition to that, we actually have the MARPA auto acquisition. So, we do have MARPA targets where it can target, you know, the 10 targets in there. This will actually go in and allow us to pick a zone. So we can do all returns, boundary zone, a motion scope, or guard zones. The way we actually access that through the menu is in the radar menu under layers, other vessels, MARPA, and then we can go into auto acquire and turn that on. So make sure that this is selected here. And then at that point, we have the option to look at all boundaries, motion scope. So for this example here, we're showing the boundaries and we've got the MARPA targets that'll show up within this boundary itself. So you could do it within it, or if you wanted to pick an area and you wanted that not to show any MARPA targets, you could do that. Or if you had a guard zone. So let's take a look at that. And we'll turn on all four of these and show you. All returns are gonna be up on the top left. And you're gonna start to see these MARPA targets popping up. Down on the bottom left, that's boundary zones within a target. And you can see those targets pop up within that particular zone. And on the right-hand side, you're gonna see excluded from a particular zone. So maybe around that landmass area, we didn't want any targets to pop up there. And then you'll see them start to pop up outside of that. And then finally on the bottom right-hand side there, that's MARPA targets within a guard zone. So anything within this red area here, within that zone, will pop up. So that's what that scanning average can actually do, or the, Mar I'm sorry, the MARPA auto acquisition can do for you is pick and choose what you're actually viewing on the screen itself. So again, with our open array radars, this is a feature compatibility matrix here that we kind of look at. Same thing goes into account. You know, you've got a radar here and you wanna make sure that it's gonna actually show you those different features. Uh, many years ago when our 
XHD2 radars came out. We had a lot of the 7200 series still out on the market, out on a lot of vessels. Still to this day, we do. And people were looking for the auto bird gain in echo trails. And they're not going to be shown until you jump up into our current lineup. So our current GPS map series, you know, 7-inch, 9, 12s, um, you know, the 8,000 series, all of these are going to show the um, auto bird gain, echo trails. You're going to get all of the feature set of both our magnetron radars, which are here, and our solid state phantom radars, which are here. Our radars are simple and easy. So once you've mounted them properly on the vessel, setup is super simple. And you can go back, I've done a little bit deeper dive into some of the radar setups and features in some of our past webinars that are on our YouTube channel. But what you're gonna wanna do is just select menu when you're on the radar page, and then you can go into installation. And this needs to be done for all of our owners out there and dealers. Every Garmin radar before it leaves, you're gonna need to set this up. We want to find front of boat. So you're not going to, no matter if it's a dome or open array, perfectly place that radar on the boat itself um, in order for your bow and your radar to line up perfectly. So what you're going to want to do is set front of boat. So we're going to select that. And once you get in here, it allows us to adjust it plus or minus a few degrees. You're usually going to see maybe two to three degrees is what you're going to see. It might be off. And the way you do it is take your radar, okay, so your heading line on your radar here, and pick a fixed target out in front of you and split the difference with this. And I, I'm sorry, first, split the difference with the bow of your boat. So the bow of your boat is going to line up on that target that's out in front of you and then see how far off this heading line is. So if it's over here to the left and you need to bring it back over, that's where you can adjust it to where the bow of your boat is splitting that target. Let's say it's a, a tall building on land and you're fixed, you're sitting still on the water and you're splitting that right down the middle with the bow of your boat, then you move that heading line over and then that splits the difference. And you just need to move it usually just a couple degrees. Only for the open arrays are you going to have to choose antenna size. And it's simple and easy. It's just going into antenna configuration. And then picking, do you have a four foot or a six foot open array? So let's do a quick review. If you're looking for a Garmin radar, let's go through the product line again. So we have magnetrons, solid state phantoms, magnetron open arrays, solid state phantom open arrays. So entry level down here, 36 nautical mile, 48 nautical mile with our 18 and 24 XHDs. And then you're adding dual radar. So like two radars in one. We have an 18 and a 24 phantom. So now you're getting to, to motion scope solid state Doppler radar. You want some more power. Now you get into our open arrays from four kilowatt, 12 kilowatt, all the way up to 25 kilowatt radars. Great bird radar, great bird radar. So the 12 and the 25 kilowatt are great bird radars. Now you want to get into an open array and you want that motion scope. You want a narrower beam to give you better target se separation. You're getting into the 50 watt, 120 watt. And then if you're looking for everything built into one radar, you can do a four foot or a six foot Phantom series, 254, 256. And these are great bird radars, lots of power, great narrow beams, so they can target separate those objects out in a distance. So I wanna thank you very much from the Garmin Marine team. If you have any questions at all, please email us at marine.training at garmin.com. 
let us know in the subject heading that this is for the radar webinar. As always, too, if you want to get some um, great insight with industry insiders, uh, different Garmin anglers, go to our Garmin Behind the Chart Plotter. Myself and Dow Thornton do a Garmin Marine podcast, and we've got some really good guests that are on there. And they talk about how they're utilizing a lot of our Garmin units. And if you've missed or if you got distracted during this webinar, uh, about a week after the webinar goes up, we will post this on our Garmin YouTube channel under Garmin, and it's under the Marine section, and then webinars. I want to thank everyone for attending, and we hope to see you out on the water.